from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Now, he lives in Plainville, Massachusetts with his wife and kids. Plainville? Who would have thought someone so interesting is from Plainville? Okay, today he's here to tell us about the Wimpy Kid movie diary, The Third Wheel. Do you guys want to hear about that? Now, who's excited to see Jeff Kitty? And who's read his books? Yes! Have you read his books over here? Wow, I tell you what, I'm so excited to see so many children excited about reading. So give it up for Jeff Kitty! Hi, everyone. Thank you. Hey, everyone, how are you doing? It's hot, isn't it? Can you imagine if you had to dance around like that? Now, I don't have any songs or anything like that, but I've got a little presentation. No more dancing. Grandparents, you don't have to worry. Uh, but I wanted to tell you about what a strange journey I've had. I actually grew up about 11 miles from here in Fort Washington, Maryland. Anybody? How about Maryland? Maryland? There we go. And I actually wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist. Oh, let's go right back. For whoever's listening, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's hit the home button. On. <laughs> We're kind of in trouble here. <laughs> let's hit the home button there. Yes, I remember you. Hold on one second. Go ahead, hit the home button. Home button, right? Now let's click on... There's, you see the kid with the uh, raising his arms with the uh, shirt off and he's got a tie on? Right under his arm that's outstretched, there's a little picture. This is what happens when you don't have control over your presentation. There's a little picture under the guy with his arms like this. <laughs> I'm about to have to go backstage. What's that? Oh, everybody sit down. Everybody sit down because kids are blocked. Backstage, can you hear me? Click on the little picture of the kid with his arms raised out under the arm. Come on, I'm not seeing that mouse move. There it is, it's moving. There's a kid with his out arms are stretched on the table. Up, no, the other way, the other way. Right there, yeah, click on that. There we go. Woo. Okay, saved. There we go. When I was a kid, I used to love comics. In, in the Washington Post in those days, there was three big comics. The Far Side. Yeah, here's another one. Bloom County, right? And here's another. We got Calvin and Hobbes, that's right, yeah. Those were great cartoons, and I decided I wanted to be a cartoonist myself. So that's the path that I started out on. So when I went to Villanova University, I created a comic called Igdoof, right? And here's my Igdoof comic, one of my very first ones. And then I transferred after my first year to the University of Maryland. Yeah. And I brought my cartoon character with me. You can see he changed a lot. And then when I had Igdoof draw himself, you'll see this picture right here, you can see he drew himself as Greg Heffley. He drew himself looking like Greg Heffley. So Igdoof has actually been around, or Greg Heffley's actually been around for a long time. Uh, so when I was a cartoonist in college, I wrote to other cartoonists. How many people have, hear, have heard of Big Nate? Yeah? Here's a Big Nate cartoon. They started writing Big Nate in the comics when I was in high school, at the end of my high school years. So I wrote to Lincoln Purse, who draws Big Nate, and I said, hey, can you help me out here? And so what he did was he wrote me letters. Have you guys ever heard of a letter? <laughs> we, you know, little pieces of paper you write on, you put stamps on them. So he wrote me letters to tell me how to get better. And one day my brother called me up. He said, you've got to look at today's Big Nate Sunday comic. And so I did. And I said, what am I looking for? And I looked very closely at one of the pictures. And you can see that Nate had a sticker page with Igdoof on it. So I knew what my purpose was. I wanted to be a cartoonist. I wanted to be in the newspapers for real. And in fact, the Washington Post, a great newspaper, yes, 
did a story on me. And I was very excited. I was like, wow, you know, I'm 22 years old, and I'm going to hit the big time with this comics thing, bring Ig Igdoof to the world. But instead, I got lots and lots of these, <laughs> right? That's a rejection letter. Parents and artists and writers, you'll get lots of these first, probably. The problem was I just couldn't draw very well. I drew like a kid, right? So eventually, I got this idea. I said, well, what if I act like I'm drawing like a kid on purpose, right? That's where the idea for Greg Heffley was born. So I got the idea for Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and I said, I'm going to write down lots of ideas. And so I got this sketchbook, and you can see that this is where the characters were starting to come to life. And here's another page. What was happening, what I didn't realize was I started drawing smaller and smaller, right? Because I didn't want to get to the end too quickly. And by the very end, here was my very last sketchbook page. <laughs> I know it looks like I was going crazy, but a lot of the ideas I was, writing down, I was writing down were ideas from my childhood growing up in Fort Washington, Maryland. I was on the swim team, and I wasn't a very good swimmer, so what I'd do is I'd hide out from my coach in the locker room, right? <laughs> That's me, 1977, I think. And we wore these Speedos, you know? Yeah, I don't know if they wear those anymore, but it was really cold in the locker room. So what I did was what any normal kid would do to get warm, I wrapped myself in toilet paper. <laughs> Mom, if you're in the audience, uh, I'm sure you're so proud. Oh, he has a picture right there. And so some of the ideas for Diary of a Wimpy Kid actually are kind of in my subconscious. I found this picture in my garage a few months ago. And this is a picture, bear with me on this, it's a picture of my high school girlfriend's mother who accidentally took a picture of herself when she grabbed a camera off of a shelf, right? And so she sh surprised herself. So years later, you know, 15 years later, that picture shows up in one of my books when Greg's party, or actually Roderick's party is blown. So all this time, I was working on Diary of a Wimpy Kid for about eight years before I showed it to anybody. I finally did. I took it to New York Comic Con, and I brought a sample packet, and it looked like this. And you can see it looks kind of boring, right? The reason it looks kind of boring is because I thought I was writing for grown-ups. I thought I was writing a book that adults would like, about looking back on your own childhood. And eventually, my publisher said, you didn't write a book for grown-ups, you wrote a children's series. And so now here I am on the children's stage, right? <laughs> I did not see it coming. Uh, since the first book got published, yeah, you're glad you guys have it, cool. Uh, since the first book got published, it's been published in uh, 40 different languages. So it's, I wanted to show you some of those covers. Here is the Korean version, the Greek version, the Hebrew version, which is printed from right to left. It's the only one I think that's printed from right to left. The Japanese version. Japanese version is very interesting because the characters all have five fingers. Usually cartoon characters have four fingers because it's sort of enough. But in Japan, there's a taboo. You're not allowed to draw characters or show images of characters with four fingers. So they added a fifth finger to each character. This one's good. It's uh, the German version. I'm going to embarrass myself in front of German speakers. It's called Greg's Tagebuch von Idioten am Singelt, right? which means Greg's journal, I'm surrounded by idiots. And I said, well, why didn't you just call a diary of a wimpy kid? And they said, well, we don't actually have a word for wimp in our country. So <laughs> I'm going to Germany in two weeks, so I'm excited for the first time. Here's a good one. This is the Brazilian version. And I was like, well, why did you call it? What does banana mean in your country? And they said, it means banana. <laughs> so you learn something new every day. So I want, want to talk to you guys about my, my seventh book, The Third Wheel. You guys want to see some images from that? Cool. So here's the cover. It's brown. I think it's brown. It's chocolate brown, right? Because it's about Valentine's Day. 
And I'm going to show you, I, I start this book from the beginning of Greg's life. You know, the, the first book starts from middle school on, right? Well, this book starts from the beginning. And I mean the beginning, right? <laughs> Greg claims to be able to remember everything about his life. And he says he was the happiest when he was, you know, in there. And he was uh, swimming around in the dark and he could take naps wherever he want, whenever he wanted. And then one day he heard this strange noise, right? Music coming from the outside. And what it was was his mother playing these prenatal, putting these prenatal speakers on, their, on her belly, right? So he could become a genius by listening to classical music. And how many moms have done that, right? Oh, good number. We did it. We did it. You know, that's why babies wake up looking so cranky is because they're, they're sleep deprived. But I wanted to show you, I actually do my drawings digitally. So here's a rough draft. And I, don't, I do everything by computer. So I, these are the only rough drafts I've ever saved. And so what I do is I draw in different colors. And then I keep drawing over it. So if you look at this picture, this is a picture of a family-style restaurant coming into focus. And if you, he says, that doesn't look like one. How many people have been to a Friendly's or a, <laughs> right? So this is my version of a family-style restaurant. And if you look really closely at this picture, it's going to tell you, it's going to give you a big hint about what this book is about. So I've gotten to do all sorts of really very cool things, um, including this. This is really a cool thing to come back to my hometown. One of the coolest things I got to do was a few months ago, I actually got to go to the White House. And I got to meet the president and his daughters, and they're Wimpy Kid fans, so that's cool. And so, uh, so this is me and my, my two sons, Will and Grant, right? And I told them, I was like, listen, I'll let you sit up there with me, but you have to behave. You cannot do anything wrong. You can't do anything wrong at all. And they promised and promised and promised. And they squirmed a lot, and they sat on their chairs, and they tipped their chairs back and all sorts of stuff. I, I didn't worry about it. They didn't speak out or anything like that, Right? But when I got home, I went on the White House's website, right? And I played back the video and watched my kids squirm. But then there was a, a moment when I had Grant uh, read to me. You know, he read from the book. And of course, anybody that's a big brother is thinking what Will's thinking right now. So on the White House website is my older son <laughs> spanking my younger son. <laughs> yeah. That's the lasting mark I'm going to make on the world, I think. So I said that there have been a lot of cool things I've gotten to do. I've gotten to speak at the Sydney Opera House and been all over the world. It's been a lot of fun. One of the coolest things I got to do is I got to make a, a balloon for the Macy's Day Parade. How many people have seen that? Thanksgiving Parade? Cool. That's right. And so here's uh, literally a napkin sketch you know, that I did uh, on vacation. I drew it up in a few minutes, and that's Greg clutching his diary because he's very scared to be up that high, right? And that got turned into a, uh, a clay model, and I'm working on this with my editor, and we're trying to make it just perfect because the balloon is actually almost as long as his tent. It's really big. We don't want to get anything wrong. And so here is uh, the balloon floating at last year's parade, and it's, we're getting ready to start the parade here. And this is myself and my two brothers, Scott and Patrick, who, uh, you know, who have been a big part of the Wimpy Kid experience. And you can see I look like a dork because I've got my hat way on my head. Nobody told me. Um, and then eventually the balloon got to fly down the streets of New York City. And the reason I wanted to end on this slide is because I wanted to inspire kids. You know, I, I'm a person, I'm a local guy. Uh, with not a lot of talent, uh, but I got to have my balloon in the Macy's Day Parade. I got to meet the president. And I just wanted to say to all the kids out there or the adults, if you have a dream, just hang on to it and keep pressing on it because maybe one day your ideas will fly as well. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I hope to meet you. I'm going to start signing way at the other end of the mall, but I hope to meet as many kids as I can. So thank you so much. Yes. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.